Opinions on the internet. Yep, we're really doing this. Some people hate the idea that others are entitled to their own opinion. And if you're one of those people, oh, oh man, you are not gonna like this video. But today I'm joined by two amazing Pikmin YouTubers, Vantage Emblem and Wigwam Man. And today we're gonna share some of our hottest takes about the Pikmin series. But before the video starts, I want you guys to leave a comment on your unpopular opinions. What's something about the Pikmin series that everyone agrees upon, but for whatever reason, you just don't? I don't care how controversial you want to be, everyone's allowed to have their own opinion, so don't be afraid to share your thoughts. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. Winged Pikmin are ugly. I just don't like the way these guys look. I get what they were trying to go for, kind of like a pixie type of Pikmin, but I, I don't know. It just doesn't resonate with me. I love the concept of Winged Pikmin, but they look too... chunky. Pikmin 1 is the worst main series game. Nostalgia can only take us so far. Now in no way am I saying Pikmin 1's a bad game, it's just not better than the rest. Pikmin 2 has more content, Pikmin 3 is more polished, and Pikmin 4 is just straight up better. The Groovy Long Legs is overrated. I was really looking forward to fighting this guy in the below grade disco th disco disco th disco thing. And when it was time for the faded battle, he died before his first phase. Concept wise, he's a very cool enemy, but some of you guys love this guy a little too much. I actually liked the Hokutate ship. Many people tend to hate this thing because he always interrupts your gameplay to say some unnecessary dialogue. But come on guys, Shepard literally does the exact same thing in Pikmin 4. And at least the Hokutate ship has some personality. Yeah, I'm looking at you, SS Drake. Puffmen are lame. I really don't know why y'all love the Puffmen so much. They had one appearance back in Pikmin 1 and since then, the whole community has been creaming their pants over them. Their design's alright, but I, I just don't see the hype. Pikmin 4's locations are boring. Other than the hero's hideaway and kinda the giant's hearth, every other location is just another giant outdoor arena. After finding out we got to go into a house, I was hoping we'd get the chance to explore more human-like areas like a water park or even a Neo Tokyo city. Yellow Pikmin digging speed is stupid. Why of all Pikmin give yellows a better digging speed? Especially when it was clearly established that white Pikmin were the designated diggers back in Pikmin 2. The arguments that Nintendo needed a use for these guys with just buff electricity and let the whites be the best diggers, it's, it's not that difficult. Britney's not that bad. So as you guys know, Britney's slander occurs on my channel quite often, but in all honesty, she isn't that bad. Objectively, Louie makes her look like a saint, but I just don't like her. Plus, someone has to be the channel's punching bag. So to all my Britney lovers out there, I'm sorry. I'm gonna still keep shitting on her though. Ice Pikmin are lazy. When Ice Pikmin were first revealed, I wasn't as excited as I thought I'd be. The Ice Pikmin looked like a combination of rock and blue Pikmin. And now that the recency bias of Pikmin 4 is settling down, I'm pretty disappointed with how these guys look. I would have much rather something like this. That's cool. The bread bugs suck. Yep, you saw it in the thumbnail and it's not clickbait. It's called engagement farming. I really don't like the bread bug, or even the giant bread bug. The crumb bug gets a pass because it's actually cute, but all you free thinkers out there praise this thing like it's a god, when in reality, it's boring and kinda ugly. The bread bugs are only popular because you see other people posting about it and just wanna fit in. Fight me. Okay, 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 I I'm done with the hot takes. For now. So let's direct our hate off of me, and hear what Wigwam Man has to say about our beloved Pikmin franchise. White Pikmin are super useful. I don't care what anyone says, there's so many times in the game where you do get the chance to use White Pikmin and I absolutely love it. And I know some people probably didn't use White Pikmin at all in this game, but come on! You got the chance to use them, please use them, please use them everywhere, they're so cool. Smoky Prog's new design is better than the old one. A lot of people disagree with this because they think the new Smoky Prog looks really dumb. But this is on purpose. This thing's design is now perfect. The Smoky Prog is meant to be a lava Mamuta that doesn't know what the hell it's doing with uncontrollable power. And that's exactly what this thing looks like. It looks dumb as hell, looks like it's some sort of child, but yet it is very threatening and dangerous. And that's why its design is perfect. Bulbears should revive again. In Pikmin 2, Bulbears used to come back to life if you left them dead on the ground for too long. I really wish this re would return. Maybe only in caves, or maybe just everywhere Bulbears appear, which I would absolutely love because it would bring a little bit more challenge and scariness to the caves and overworlds in Pikmin 4. 
Ochi should have been a Bulbman. Early on in Pikmin 4's development, Ochi was actually going to be some sort of friendly Bulb or most likely some sort of Bulbmin. But sadly, to make the game more marketable and more friendly to a wider audience, they decided to go with the theme of dogs. And this obviously paid off very well, but I will forever miss whatever Bulbman Ochi looked like. Corgwin should have built houses for other castaways. Corgwin is the guy that lets you replay Dandori challenges, I'm pretty sure. And he is a construction worker. Now, tell me this. Where are these people sleeping? For a planet that is so dangerous overnight in the other Pikmin games that you have to fly out into space and hover in orbit all night, it's strange that these guys just get to chill here in the dark and sleep on the floor, I guess? I don't know. The final boss sucks. Yep, I'm the one to say it, but the final boss could have been a lot more cooler, and I think this dog is just kind of boring. Like, it, it's not a fun, crazy surprise, it's just a dog. Primordial Thicket is the best area. This area is the absolute best. It's got such a cool design, such cool enemy encounters, such cool treasures, such cool caves, and on top of that, it recommends you to use White Pikmin on the surface. And my final hot take is that difficulty modes aren't needed for this game. There's so much you can do in this game, you can just give yourself any restrictions you want. I don't see why we would need a difficulty mode, really. Although I do think the game should be harder by default. I do agree that just rampacking the areas with more enemies would be absolutely brilliant for the game, but sadly this is not the case. But hey, you can do any sort of challenge you want, so don't really worry about difficulty modes, just give yourself a really unique challenge and go ahead and see if you can beat the game of it. Wow, I I really didn't think it could get worse, but but it, uh, it did. Wigwam, you said some controversial ass shit, and although I don't agree with any of it, I'm going to respect his opinion. But let's see what Vantage has cooking up. There is just too much dialogue in the main campaign of all Pikmin games. Particularly in the beginning, during the tutorial, during the first couple days, when you're first getting your bearing. I love when Pikmin games just let you go and let you explore and let you discover things on your own. But also, the tutorial goes on for a very long time and has a lot of text in it. For a game that's rather open and exploratory, this text is kind of the antithesis of what the game is about. Okay, somebody's gotta say it. Hey Pikmin is a refreshing addition to the series that added way more than it detracted. I'm serious. Hey Pikmin added a bunch of new ideas, a bunch of new concepts, and new enemies that are really, really exciting. There's a lot of things that we were talking about that ended up coming into fruition in Pikmin 4 that were set up in Hey Pikmin. Pikmin 4 needs respawning enemies, even if it's just for like a higher difficulty or something. The fact that enemies do not return on the surface really, really, really hurts my immersion in the game. Previous Pikmin games would add additional enemies into the areas as time progressed. My favorite example of this is the beady long legs and the bull bear that appear in the perplexing pool in Pikmin 2. It's just a lot of fun seeing these new enemies pop up and frankly jump scare you. However, I understand the game is kind of designed to 100% areas one at a time, but I frankly think that goes against the design philosophy of Pikmin as well. Pikmin 1 and 2 nail isolation in a way that other games in the series can't, and that's because of how the characters are handled. It's great, I love the writing of Olimar in Pikmin 1, it's so sad and lonely. Pikmin 2, he doesn't talk much, and nor does Louie, it's just emails to you from other characters, and the ship that will not stop blabbering. Pikmin 3 and 4 are really cute games, but they don't feel as lonely or imposing as Pikmin 1 and 2. Pikmin 3 is great because of how linear it is. I know a lot of people hate how linear Pikmin 3 is, and I get that. Now, I'll be upfront, I prefer linear games to open world games. So for me in particular, a game like Pikmin 3 is perfect. I think the problem with Pikmin 3 is not that it's linear, and not that the linear content is as well curated as it is. I mean, people will tell you how good those bosses are, and how well the lead up to some of the bosses in Pikmin 3 is. The issue with Pikmin 3 is that there's not enough of it, and we know about a cut area in Pikmin 3 now thanks to finding it in the files. And yet, even with a whole area cut, Pikmin 3 is so much fun to play. Even with Pikmin 4 out now, Pikmin 3 still remains my favorite in the series, and I think a lot of the linear design really helps with that. 
I'm all on board with the playable characters riding Ochi in Pikmin 4. I think that's really interesting. I think being able to jump over challenges is really exciting and adds a whole new dimension to exploring that's kind of like a more evolved version of Captain Throwing. What I don't like is the Pikmin riding Ochi. I actually really dislike this change, and more often than not, I try getting rid of Ochi in my squad because I like Ochi, but I don't want to ride him, and I do not want my Pikmin riding him because it takes away from that classic Pikmin feel. Which is sad. I love Ochi. Look at this good boy. I want to use him more, which means the Pikmin shouldn't ride on his back. That's all I'm saying. This is my biggest Pikmin hot take of all time, and I've held this hot take for a long time. Pikmin 3's mission mode is in many ways the very, very best part of Pikmin 3, and maybe some of the best Pikmin content ever made. However, I think it was a bad idea to make those mission mode stages. And the same is true with Bingo Battle. Why? Well, I think the game would have been served by using those exact levels or the development time needed to make those levels to just make more levels for the main campaign. I'm serious. There's too many people that played through Pikmin 3 that never touched the mission mode and never touched Bingo Battle. Pikmin 4 put its multiplayer and side content directly into the main campaign, so players had to interact with it, thus justifying the time used. That's why the Dondori challenges and Dondori battles are directly in the campaign, and it's such a smart decision. Yeah, no, I, I, I still don't like Pikmin 3. It's just way too linear. You get no freedom in that game. But, like I said at the beginning of the video, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Unfortunately, I got some bad news for you guys. We're only halfway through our hot takes and the video's already at 12 minutes and it's just gonna be way too long, so I'm gonna have to split this into two parts. But, the second part's coming out tomorrow. I worked my ass off all of Thanksgiving weekend for this, so y'all better be grateful. Canadian Thanksgiving, we, we celebrate in October for, for some reason. So stay tuned for tomorrow where you get to watch your Pikmin hot takes. And if the video's already out, click on this like annotation thing up here, top, top right, and you'll be able to watch part two. So what was the point of this video? I, I really don't know. I I'm just running out of ideas, man. But I think there's a very important life lesson that we can all take away from this video. Every single one of you heard at least one take that you didn't agree with, and you probably didn't like that. So does that mean we should start a war in the comment section? Yeah, fuck it, go crazy. Let's turn this comment section into an absolute war zone, just because just it's funny. But also a massive shout out to Wigwaman and Vant Jembum for joining me on this video. They make some awesome Pikmin content, so be sure to subscribe to them. I'm waiting. You know what to do, you, you know how to subscribe to someone. You click on their name. You click on the red shiny button on their channel. I'll sit here all day. It's it's free. It's it's harmless. You just pre press the subscribe button. That that's it. Still waiting. Assholes.